Hello everyone, it's time to open the October Sketchbox Premium Art Supply Subscription Box. Lovely lime, lime slimes on the box art. Let's see what we have. Looks like we got it all right there. And cumbersome tissue paper. Ooh, all kinds of stuff. Alright, how are we going to get to it? without making an entire mess here. Well, eh, it's not quite staying in frame. This is rolling. Goodbye, tissue paper. All right, what do we have here? Ooh, that looks like an orange cover. I've got a little palette here handy. We have some inks, of course, because it's Inktober. We got some brushes, we got some art. Wow, look at that. Green and purple. That's interesting. Danica Sills. Nice little piece of art there. Very October feeling. And here is the menu card. Ink Exploration Premium Box we have. And let's look at the side with the menu. I'm going to make some room right here for it all. Eh, that works. Um, and it looks like the prompt is mischief. Hmm, mischief. All right, let's uh, look at the sticker here. Cute as always. Love the different stickers. Um, that can stay out of frame. And we have our surface here, which is the Sketchbox exclusive Legion Hot Press Pad, four by six inches, 140 pounds, and 10 sheets. It says it's subtly textured, interesting for hot press, must be very subtle. It's perfect for wet media and offers crisp edges when used with the inks in this month's box. Interesting. Beautiful, bright white there. I'm pulling off a piece to swatch out on, and I'll set this out of frame here. Scoot over. And then, let's look at the brushes, since it looks like we have... Actually, before we go into the brushes, I kind of want to see what this is, because then I can swatch it right away. A Kuratake Bimoji brush pen in scarlet crimson. Interesting. Because when I see this, I look, I think, orange. This looks very orange. On camera, it looks a little more red-orange, but... In person, it looks like a pumpkin to me. Perfect for on-the-go ink work, this bristle-tipped pen can create fun textural effects. I don't know, they, they always have this little loop here. I haven't actually used it with that. I have another one right here, and this one, and I don't read Japanese, which I did. Maybe someday I can learn, because I can't do anything with those characters. Um, but it has that nice little uh, thing there to theoretically keep it from rolling. So this one's like a navy that I have, and then I think I have a black somewhere around here. And yep, that one has bristles too. Um, it, it's very permanent, that one. So this one doesn't quite say, but I'm, I'm thinking it's probably permanent also. You can't really post the cap. I mean, so wait, can you do it this way? Well, look at that. Okay, you can post the cap. I like that because I like posting the cap, otherwise I lose it. So, oh yeah, this doesn't look red at all. It looks very orange, which isn't too bad. I mean, I just was scarlet, crimson, I'm thinking red. Okay, Kuretake. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I like being able to do a little swirl on the K. I don't know why it's a little bit fancy there. And, you know, um, before I write anything else, let me just set that down. I'm going to open one of these brushes. Let's go with this one right here so that I can check the water, the permanency of it, and whether you can spray it with water. Hard to get that out of there. I have some water just out of frame here. This first brush that I released from its packaging is the Dagger Brush, one quarter inch. It says it's perfect for getting into small areas, large washes of color, and dramatic sweeping marks. And is that going to focus? Let's see. Yeah, my camera's been having trouble focusing, and I haven't found a new one yet. <laughs> found a new one. Ha ha. I don't have the budget for a new one, so hopefully it's just a problem with lighting and the dark days. But uh, I'm going to get the sizing off of this real quick. Cute little brush. The dagger is a bit mystifying to me 
because, you know, it's kind of new to me anyway, but it's fun also. I just, I feel like it's a little unpredictable. But then again, you know, I haven't practiced with the dagger really hardly at all. So I think it's one of those brush shapes that you could do a lot of amazing things with once you have a good hang on it. So this is already pretty much permanent there, but let's see what we can do. I'm putting a little bit of just water on here to see what happens. Ooh, yeah. Because we can use it with a palette, I'm sure. And dilute it and do washes and things. And this looks like the perfect shade of pumpkin to me. Although it's called Scarlet Crimson. And I don't know, I've got issues with crimson because I have a very specific idea of what crimson should be. And it's not orange, let me just say. It is not orange, but that's okay. Scarlet tends to be more on the warm side. But this is not even red. Folks, this is not red. Get over it. Okay, I'm trying to get over it. <laughs> yes. Sometimes things are hard for me. Oh, I love these bristles. It's I'm just having a little fun here, and I probably need to move on. But, oh, you know what? Before I move on, let's just, uh, let's just reinforce this thing I'm talking about here. And, okay, that's not that beautiful, but... Look at that. What is it? Can you tell already? We'll give it a stem. Ah! It's a pumpkin. Okay, I don't even know what that noise was that I just made. I am so sorry. Here, I was trying to put it on the wrong way. I really like the uh, Kuretake Bimoji brush pen, in fact. And I'm super excited because I didn't have this color. I don't care if it's named something silly. Whatever. I can get over that. I don't even know if... My navy one came with a name, so, you know. All right, what next? Ooh, we've got, well, we've got another brush here. Why don't we just check this out? This is the Sketchbox Signature Liner Brush in a size 4. It's a nice long tip. Again, it has the sizing on it. But we're going to have to open something else to try it out. I'm totally getting out of frame. Let me move down here. So you can see my beautiful little brushes and this thing. White, uh, this is white, but we can look at what it is. It's Higgins Drawing Ink. It's an opaque white drawing ink. It offers highlights on its own or tints when mixed with other inks. This is going to be great. I hope it plays well with the thing I was saving for last year. Actually, no, not last. There's something else. With the Sketchbox Signature Acrylic Ink Set. Ooh, we have charcoal, goldenrod, and blackberry. This custom acrylic ink has been specially formulated to create a wide range of hues when intermixed. So that's exciting. Let's just go see what these do. Cute little bottles. Um, I wonder if you need to shake them. And since they're acrylic ink, they should be permanent when dry. Here's the charcoal. What does it say? I should read this first. Okay, it says, our acrylic ink has great coverage and opacity due to the high quality pigments. It doesn't say anything about what those pigments are, but they'd probably tell you if you emailed them. I don't want to bother that. And binder in our recipe, it is light, fast, and permanent once dry. Okay. And it can be used with a brush dip pen. Ooh, with a dip pen. That sounds fun. I'll have to try that some other time. Or airbrush, which I don't have someday, maybe. Shake bottle. Okay, you are supposed to shake it. And blah, blah, blah. Okay, shaky, 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 shaky. Hopefully that's good enough. And then we have the Higgins. Did it? Ooh, it's hard. It says it's waterproof drawing ink. It doesn't say anything about shaking. Had a little uh, interruption. Lost my train of thought, so I have no idea what I was saying. But we need to look at these inks and see how they swatch out and try these out. Before we do that, I think I do want to look at this pen. I know I'm just reading everything, but it's the Art Primo Hit and Go. It's a high quality empty marker. It says it offers a consistent, oops, I'm unscrewing it, three millimeter tip. Perfect for creating consistent lines. I think that I haven't decided what color I want to put in here yet. So if I do before the end of the video. I will swatch it out, but ew, that's a tough one because I'm not sure what I want to put in there yet. So let's see what we have here. And I'm going to scoot the menu over. Hopefully you're not needing to look at it right now. And let's just swatch some of these out. I think let's put the white in the middle. I have my little flower petal palette here. 
We're gonna need more white than that. And I can't remember. This is this permanent, did it say? Waterproof. So that's permanent. Yep. And then we have charcoal. Let's put Oh, whoops, it's not a dropper. I mean, it doesn't have a separate dropper. Put a couple in there, and then I'll probably put like a lighter wash of it in here. So then this next petal, I think I'm going to go with the orange. That way I can hopefully tell which one's which. And did they say what colors these are? Yes, they did. Goldenrod. I called it orange. But you know what? Looks orange. Let's. It probably washes out to be more yellow. And then Blackberry. I do love the name of this one. I'm thinking purple. Let's see. Oh, it looks very purple. All right, we need some water here. I have water. Ooh, and I'm making a mess with it, of course. I'm going to put some water in the wells that are next to my very strong pigment colors. And that way... We can get more than one look. All right, let's just go right in with charcoal and get an initial look. A nice, rich, black, almost black, dark, dark gray. I think at here, and this is full strength here. Yeah, yeah it looks, I don't know. Is it going to dry lighter? We shall see. And then we're going to put this. Wow, didn't need that much but yeah that's a nice gray I want to say it's a warm gray but I'm not entirely sure washing it right over the bottom of my pumpkin there and you know I might need another palette or two for tints with the white I have another little flower puddle palette here because oops we're running out of room I just, I don't even know why. Why do I have that there? I don't know. But I do, so let's make something here. Oops, I wanted to keep that to be my clean water, but nope. It's not clean anymore, so we'll have to grab another one. When you're scatterbrained, when I'm scatterbrained, that happens. Made it very, very light gray here. Eh, it doesn't look that much different. Um, but... Ah, what did I do? I just put it in the clean water. Oh, I'm so disappointed in myself there. Life. Alright, so not a whole lot of variety there. Now, let's do some orange. Orange. And I'm calling it orange. Golden rod. And look at it on the paper. Looks much more golden. That's a beautiful color. And that is the full strength version there. And then let's uh let's make a light one. Ooh. You can see that pretty. Look at that. Hmm. And look at that. Um it's oops, what did I do there? Look at that. It looks almost greenish. So there must be maybe a blue undertone. But then that would mean it's cool. I don't know. And let's make a tint here with the really light color. Oops, that's really light, but we can make a little bit darker one. Oh, lovely. I'm going to just put some more of the street pigment in there. That's very creamy looking, isn't it? Mm. Not very different than the original color, but that's okay. All right, let's see what purple looks like. Purple, which is blackberry. Ooh, my favorite. Okay, I love that color. And I'm seeing, yeah, I'm really seeing this art here in these colors, but this is a beautiful green, so we're gonna have to see how that was mixed too. I'm not sure if it's, I mean, purple and the golden, blackberry and the golden rod, I think would make a nice brown. Not 100% sure, but that's what I'm thinking. So maybe just a tiny bit of the 
charcoal and the goldenrod makes that lovely green? We shall see. This time I am going to put some white over here, clean it off, and just go straight in with the dark blackberry. Ooh, makes it like a lavender color or lilac. That's pretty. Okay. Well, let's see what else we can do here. We've got some more open petals. So, let me grab just a little bit of orange. I mean, orange. Stop calling it orange. <laughs> and how about a little bit of the charcoal? That's uh, not enough. Let's grab a little more. A little more of the straight. Ooh, see, almost. Kind of brown, but it's got a hint of green. I really hope I can get a green out of this. Let's put some more in there. Okay, that is a moody. Looks like a moody green. Oh, yeah. I think that qualifies as green. What do you guys think? Should we add a little more orange to it? And... Maybe just a little more black. I wonder if... Hmm. Well, let's just see what happens if we put a little blackberry into that. How about just a little bit of the light blackberry? Yeah, it looks more brown to me. Not sure how she... how... they got this dark green, but we're gonna have to try... I'm gonna have to try one of those, though. Swatch charts and see because I ran out of paper here. Hmm. All right. Maybe I'll do that and then just speed it up. And then I have I have an idea. I think it's it might involve a pumpkin. Yes. And one of my favorite favorite animals. But we shall see because uh, I think you could do a nice light wash of a pumpkin with this goldenrod color and then ooh, add some in. Oh, speaking of, before I do that, um, let's go see what happens if we do that. Add the water to it and then I'm going to add a little bit of the goldenrod. So let's see. I'm just going to wash it over here because that's permanent. Yeah, so I think we can get some nice pumpkin colors out of that. All right, now I need to set up a chart for swatching. You know what I also realized? I didn't try out the, um, the liner brush yet. <laughs> so, oops, let me do that real quick. And just see if I can go in between the lines. Oh, I need more ink on there. Or is it wetting already? So this is, I think it's good, whoops. It's good for, like, I don't know what it's good for. You know what? I'm not even going to say that. I thought it was good for, like, swiggly things, but I don't know. I feel like you can get a really fine point. It's kind of fun. I think this one's also one that you kind of need to practice with. And I haven't done a lot with liner brushes I think so see like where I turn there it's not that great um but it is fun to play with so we'll just see I'm messing up my little swatch card but look at all those cool lines you can get with the liner brush <laughs> and I wonder if you can outline things easily let's see I don't know can you use it like a liner is that why it's called a liner brush Need more ink on there. It's drying. Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe not with my level of skill, though. I'm not sure. All right, that's the liner brush. But for the swatch purposes, and I don't really have enough boxes. I kind of messed up because I was gonna do white, but I guess we'll only. I don't know if I'm gonna do white because I don't have it on this row. But so. Charcoal, charcoal, should be just charcoal, right? And then this one would be charcoal and blackberry. So, well, we'll see. Okay, so 
I had a lot of trouble with this swatch card here, but let's just go in and see. We have some pastel like colors here. This is mixed with the white. This row here, I started by just coloring with the marker. It's the Car Scarlet Crimson and then doing the wash of the other color over. And this marker, when it gets down on the paper, it sort of dominates and it just, it didn't really mix with the other colors. Um, so I redid this row right here, right here by coloring the marker onto the ceramic palette and doing a wash of that color and then a wash of the other color. Here is charcoal, blackberry, golden rug, and the scarlet crimson. So that's a wash of this marker against itself. That's what a wash of this marker looks like. And then with the golden rod there, with the blackberry there, and with the charcoal there, it makes a nice light brown. And then the rest of these are here. I think I might just wait on filling this pin because I'm not sure what color I would want in there right now. Because you can just do all of these colors with the inks there. I think the most different color that you can get between the different inks is with the goldenrod and a little bit of the charcoal. You get this nice green. So I'm not sure if I want that in a marker. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe I'll try to mix this kind of darker green. So you've got on this one, there is more of the charcoal and a little bit of the goldenrod and it's probably the closest to this green that they have in this artwork and maybe that would be good to have in the marker I'm not sure so that one's to be continued and at this point I think I am going to either put music on or a voiceover with my final thoughts and do some artwork here I will say I'm not the biggest fan of hot press paper and maybe that's just because I the way I just don't know how to like do less water yet um i'm really heavy-handed with the water and but so the jury's out on the paper pad and it's probably mostly just because i think i would prefer cold press but you know we got hot press so i'm gonna see what i can do with it we'll see all right i'm back and the first thing i'm doing here is a little wash of this lovely chocolate brown color that i mixed with the uh, scarlet crimson marker swatched onto the palette in a little bit of the charcoal ink. And the prompt today, for this month rather, was mischief. So of course that made me think of these cute little creatures called raccoons who are rather mischievous and I have him coming out of a pumpkin maybe making mischief in that way. However, let me tell you, I think there was more mischief going on with the paper and the water in this little piece of art with me. I really struggled at the very beginning. I think I moved, I don't know, I splashed the palette and even some of the blackberry got on near the ear. You can kind of see the mark there. It kind of disappears after a while, but wow, did I struggle. And actually, I was really disappointed and frustrated with my final piece, even. Um, you know, stepping back, it's it's better when you look at it a little bit, when you're not, like, right next to all the troubles you're having. So he is cute, yes, but I mean, in my head, he looked a lot better. And <laughs> so, but part of the issue is, like I said earlier is that I am not good with hot press paper. So if hot press paper is your favorite watercolor paper, please sing its praises in the comments. Let me know what why you love it. And maybe I can learn something from that too. Um, I do struggle with controlling the water. I mean, it's, it's, a, I think there's a learning curve there. And so I probably just need to practice more to be honest. So yeah, who knows? But I mean, it's, gr it's great paper. I, it's maybe not the best for me. I have a lot of hot press paper from these boxes. Give me more cold press, please. Anyway, so I really liked the liner brush. Again, I think both of these brushes are ones you want to spend some time practicing with, which is not something I'm super good at. I like to get right into the fun stuff and not so much the fundamentals. And But they're both great brushes. I use them both for different things. I liked getting a little bit more of a wispy fur texture with that liner brush, but you can kind of get that a little bit even with the dagger with the very tip. Um, but the dagger was also kind of nice for doing my pumpkin sides. And so, yeah, I like both brushes. They, they, 
performed very well. I had a major oops with that larger pumpkin leaf, but I was just like, okay, it's going to be, I think it was supposed to be a vine. And then, so the liner brush, sometimes on my turns, it would just not keep the line, if that makes sense. I did have a happy little accident with the vine on the right, um, and I like how that turned out, but it was hard to control on turning, so I need to practice more with that, or maybe, you know, I would be using it for something else. Here's how my raccoon turned out. I hope you enjoy seeing it. As always, have a wonderful and creative day. Bye!